All right, you guys, we're about to become very good friends because we're about to spend quite a while together making a video. We've learned a lot of individual skills, but it's really hard to be able to put things together. I remember when I was learning photography, before I ever started my photography YouTube channel and blog, I would watch professional photographers on these courses and they would just say like, okay, now we gotta set up the lighting. And then they would cut and the lighting was all set up. And then they would show the picture and it looked amazing. But I was like, wait, show me the process where you tried it and it didn't look good and what you changed and slowly working toward it. Cause that's what I need to learn. I don't need to just see how amazing you are. And so that's what this video is about. You're learning all the fundamentals, all the individual pieces. In this video, I'm gonna put it all together in the full process of how to actually get started with your YouTube channel. At that point, you'll be ready for the rest of the course. So let's go on a little field trip to the whiteboard. All right, we need to decide on a topic for a YouTube channel. I'm gonna be making one and through the process of even recording the first video and editing it right here so you can see exactly what I'm doing to create a new YouTube channel. Okay, can you guys see okay? We gotta decide on our topic first. So I feel like I can create my best content when I'm knowledgeable about something, but at the very beginning of getting into that thing. Now maybe I'm a little bit unique. Maybe other people would prefer to do something that they have a huge amount of knowledge on and uh, can just speak on. Now that's cool too. But uh, at least for me, I really binge learn. When I am getting into a new topic, I just research the snot out of it uh, over the course of a couple months and I like to become a quick study. And during that time, I'm asking myself the kind of questions that millions of other people starting in that same thing also do. And so usually when I'm thinking of a channel, I'm not thinking what's the most economically beneficial thing that will earn me tons of money. I'm first just thinking about like, what intrigues and inspires me right now? So here are a few things. One, mountain biking. Never thought I'd say that, but I bought a brand new mountain e-bike the other day. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. <laughs> okay, so mountain bike. Another option. Uh, I just bought a property um, down in St. George. Our family's actually moving. In fact, that's one I should do is just moving because we're moving right now. Um, but what I was going to say is the property we were that we bought is has a one acre pasture. And so we can't have a horse there. And my kids have been bugging me about getting a horse. So horses. So now we have some ideas for the channel, what kind of niche we want to go in. Let's talk about some of the things that we need to do in each one. First of all, mountain biking. So first let's look at, can you get the traffic? Can you get a subscriber base? And then we're gonna look at, if I get a subscriber base, can I make money in that niche? So let's look. So mountain biking, can I get the traffic? Well, yes, I think so. And the reason I say that is I was as I was looking at e-bike reviews, I found a lot of reviews. But you know what? Most of them were UK based. And while the content certainly transfers over, there are also quite a few models we have here that they don't have there and vice versa. And some of the issues we have on the different terrain is different than there. And so I definitely saw a little bit of a crack there where you could actually do quite a bit. But frankly, even if that weren't the case, I mean, it's just a big market and I think I can contribute something to the market, uh, even if there is competition. So I think I can get traffic here. Now moving, can I get the traffic? Well, a lot of people move and a lot of people will search it, but that is a commodity, my friends, and we don't wanna make commodity content. When I say commodity content, I'm talking about the kind of thing that you Google in the grocery store, you get your answer and you're done, right? 
you want to Google something like, where do I get cheap moving boxes? Even if somebody had a really great video with some tips on that, I'm only moving for a couple weeks. I'm not like into moving. It's not like my hobby. It's not like something I want to like, oh yeah, do you subscribe to that moving channel? That's awesome. It's just not, ha. Ah. And so can I get the traffic is a big question mark here. Could I get a bunch of views? Yeah. But will they turn into subscribers? Will they turn into a tribe? Will they turn into fans? That sounds harder because not many people are into this. And so, in fact, this is kind of intriguing me now because I want to do, I like channels that require a little bit of uh, stuff. So if I were just doing random tips on moving, um, how to find houses on the cheap, uh, how to get cheap movers, how to get moving boxes, uh, tips for the home inspection, all that kind of stuff. Man, this channel is going to fail hard because you may get a lot of views, but they won't turn into subscribers. They just don't care about you because it's a short term problem for them. So one spin that we could take on that uh, is what about family? Uh, what about just improving your family and moving forward as a family? If I made a video that had the content that somebody looking for moving would really, really love, but in that video, I made it really clear what this channel about is about. It's about family and making your family better uh, during a move. That may actually be a great video uh, to do on that on a channel. So we're gonna, can we get traffic there? Yes, but we can't just do random tips. We need to focus on families if we're going to do it. Now, horses. Can I get traffic on this? Yes. What I would say is, um, as I've searched about horses, there is a lot to it. I mean, a lot, a lot. Like, it feels like the kind of horse families have been doing this for generations. And as I'm looking at content, I'm just deer in the headlights trying to understand a lot of this. So can I do a channel there? Oh yeah, no question about it. All I have to do is I start a video and instead of sound, instead of starting a video on an echo, <laughs> instead of sounding like an expert in a video, an expert starts a video saying, hey guys, today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about horse shoeing um, and 13 mistakes you don't want to make. That's an expert. I am big, you are small. I am knowledgeable, you are not, right? That's an expert kind of video. Now, if you are instead a beginner yourself, then people are going to see right through you if you aren't authentic with them. And so instead, I would approach that same video like this. Um, I'd be at my horse pastor um, and I'd say something like, hey, you guys, I just got my horse a few weeks ago and I've been researching like crazy, trying to understand everything I need to know to protect my horse's feet. Now, I've learned a ton of cool stuff and I want to share it with you in this video, but I'm not an expert. I'm new to owning a horse and that's kind of how this channel works. And so some of you guys may be more knowledgeable. Please tell me some things that I miss in the comments because I want to do this right. And then you proceed to be super knowledgeable in the video. Don't ever start talking down like the expert. Still be who you are, but really know your stuff and have researched the snot out of this thing, right? I said that twice and I don't think I've ever said that phrase in my whole life. Um, research the snot out of it. Um, okay, so could we do this with the horses? Yep, absolutely. We just need to take a little bit of a different tone because I'm not a horse expert. So that's question number one. Can we get the subscriber base views and people to actually stay? Now question number two, can we actually make money if we get that traffic? So could I make money with mountain biking? You know, this I think is an open question actually. Certainly all these channels can do fine with YouTube ads. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that. But let's talk first about what I would do with the audience. So I've seen a lot of people make a lot of blogs about mountain biking, very popular topic. And I've always had some concerns about um, about it because biking is pretty simple. You get on a bike and you pedal, right? Um, and you think like, what accessories do you need? Helmet. Um, and that's because I didn't know much about the topic. 
Actually, there's a ton. I was looking for a five bike bike rack for the back of my truck that will handle an e-bike that's heavy. They're like 50 pounds. And so um, I, I looked on YouTube and I watched a bunch of reviews of bike racks, but they all only had one. And so they couldn't really provide me a good comparison. And they never really said if they work with an e-bike. And so uh, that's a place that you can make money as an affiliate for that. Plus you could certainly do online courses um, in bike maintenance and mountain biking skills, things like that. Um, and that's down the line. I can't teach you anything right now, but I mean, I could partner with my local bike shop. I could become friends with them and say, hey, can I pay you 2000 uh, bucks for a weekend? And I'm gonna record you teaching this and then I'm gonna sell the course. Um, so there are always ways. Okay, so can I make money as an affiliate, as an online course? Yes. How will I do on ads on YouTube? Probably pretty well. Um, because they're expensive products. There'll be a lot of companies advertising. Um, they're people who you know, have money to be spending on a hobby, probably do pretty well. Okay, moving. I think with YouTube ads, we'll do extremely well. A lot of companies want to target people that are moving because you have huge expenses. You're looking, some people get a mortgage, some people are uh, looking for a moving company, some people are, um, you know, buying a home for realtors, uh, just so many different things when you're moving. So I think with YouTube ads, that's great. We're just seeing, our, would a lot of advertisers want to advertise on those videos? Oh yeah. Now, how else could I make money on that channel, right? Am I gonna have an online course on moving? Maybe, uh, maybe one on selling your home on the cheap, something like that. Maybe we could do something kind of cool there, uh, selling your home and prepping it, that kind of stuff. But again, we're gonna focus on family and just have a video kind of, or a series of videos about moving um, in order to do that. We're gonna have content about moving, channel tribe about family in order to do, to do that one. So could we do that about family? Oh yeah. Now horses, um, yeah, I mean, there are lots and lots of products. You could do online courses, etc. So we're in a rare situation where we thought of three niches and they both work, or they all work. Now, if nothing came to you, if you said, oh, I'm not really doing anything, some people um, some people have a harder time selecting a niche uh, than I do. I could come up with two niches a week for the rest of my life. Um, and I think it's because I just have a fascination with this world we live in. When something new pops up, I wanna learn it, and I wanna binge it and learn about it and stuff. And so um, for me, it's not hard. In fact, Nathan's office is right over there. And I, all the time I'm walking by his office, I'm like, hey, Nathan, uh, let's do a channel about military surplus. Ah, military surplus vehicles. Ooh, no, we could do one about, um, you know, military surplus uh, Hummers and redoing those Hummers and building them up and different things like that. And uh, then it's like, oh, military... Uh, Camping items, just, they're just like, oh man, you can do so much. And so I'm always walking past his office and giving stuff. But if these things don't come as easily to you to try to select a niche, go to YouTube and see what channels you subscribe to, what informational channels you subscribe to. Um, and put your hat in the ring. Just because there's competition, it's really okay. It's a huge world out there. Billions of people are on YouTube. And so somebody is gonna like the way you talk. Somebody's gonna like the way you look. Somebody's gonna like the way you present things. Somebody's gonna like the information you have. Put your hand in there. Okay, so now we gotta decide which one we're gonna go with. So, um, okay. Since I have to make a video in this video, um, I don't think I can do horses yet because I haven't even, I, like I literally started researching it yesterday and I'd love to really immerse myself, binge in there for a couple weeks before I start. Just a couple weeks and I'd be ready. Mountain biking, I think I could do, but my bike is in a different state right now. Uh, so it's gonna be hard to make this video even though I would love to do that uh, when I get down there. Uh, I think I can do moving. I'm kind of intrigued by this one because it's kind of non-traditional. Um, so, okay, we're gonna make a channel on moving. Now we gotta come up with a name. So to do that, we better go to the laptop, come with me. A lot of people are concerned about how to name their channel. I don't really care that much what you call your channel. 
most everything is going to work. And frankly, it's not that big of a deal to change the name of a YouTube channel after the fact. I'm going to like shrink up these tripod legs. And so most people stress it more than I do. But I would say that you do need to make sure that you aren't going to create trademark problems for yourself down the road. And so I'll show you how to avoid that. I also would probably avoid your name as the name of the channel just because it kind of sets you up as the hero. Hey, get over here. What are you guys looking over there for? Um, it kind of sets you up as the hero of the channel instead of them as the hero or the tribe as something that they're focused on, right? Like if I called this channel Jim Harmer, when somebody goes and watches the video, they really don't know what to expect, right? It's like, I watched this video, this one's about a family and the family's moving, but I, I mean, it just gives me no indication of if I subscribe, what's the rest of the channel. And so I feel like a channel is generally stronger to have a name other than just the creator's name. Okay, so we're making a channel about families. And so we're just gonna start throwing out some names. I'm gonna just make a list on my computer here. I'm just gonna open up Google Docs or something. Meet my dog. This is lightning. Okay, so I'm just gonna start chucking mud at the wall. Um, families that play. I <laughs> like family that play together, stay together kind of thing. Um, or better family or all about family, surviving kids. This is kind of cool, family like in phonetic, but I don't know how you'd ever write that. Maybe like fa me li. No, that's stupid. <laughs> family forward. Grow them kids. All right, whatever. I'm just throwing down some ideas, right? People obsess way too much over the name. Try to get a good name, look out there and just go with it. So now we need to decide if this is an okay name for a trademark. Now the thing with YouTube is they will allow multiple channels with the same name. So just because that channel exists right now, doesn't mean that you can't also make a channel with that same name, just be aware of the trademark issue. So a trademark protects the source of goods or services. And so if I make a shoe company, Nike, well, you might rightly think that if you bought a Nike shoe, it was from the Nike shoe company and not Jim's shoe that he just called Nike, right? That's what a trademark is protecting. And so I'm gonna start by just going into YouTube and I'm gonna start searching in quotes these names, families that play. And I'm gonna filter by channels. Okay, that's a good sign. I'm not seeing exactly that. I'm gonna try to take off the quote, to see if there's something that's very similar. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm not seeing anything on YouTube, but now let's just search the web at large. Families that play. Okay, a lot of people have written this phrase, but I don't see any that's like a website. I'm also gonna check for the domain name, families that play. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna go to GoDaddy. So nothing's actively on there, but I'm just gonna go familiesthatplay.com. Wow, okay. So this is like totally available. Familiesthatplay.com is available. 
Now, it's not that if the .com is taken, it's necessarily trademarked, but it's just a good sign that nobody's like actively trying to use this name. If we want to get real legal, at least in the United States, I'm going to do a test trademark search. I'm going to go to USPTO.gov, do a simple word mark search for families that play. Okay, so now we see several here. Um, let's click on this first one. Oh, it's called A Family That Plays. And let's see what category it's in. Okay, so this is in the goods and services category for game cards, playing cards, etc. Now, if somebody sees a YouTube called Families That Play, would they think that if they saw a game, uh, a deck of cards called A Family That Plays, would they think one is from the other? Not necessarily. I mean, we're just a YouTube channel. Um, there could be some overlap, but probably a reasonable consumer is probably not going to be confused here. And so I think we're going to be okay. Um, now, this is a legal question that you need to decide. It's different in all your jurisdictions. I am an attorney, but I'm not your attorney. And so it's something you need to decide. But for me, I'm not seeing enough evidence that somebody's going to be super mad at me if I use the name A Family That Plays. And so pretty cool. Uh, this was not staged, by the way. Um, the very first one that I put on my list is Families That Play. I think it's kind of cool, and I'm going to go with it. All right, so now I've got to actually go create the channel. I'm logged into just my personal Google account, and I'm just gonna click my name up here and then click your channel. Now, I have already have some videos that I've put up here. It doesn't matter if you've done that before, you've just tossed up some videos to like share them, but not like really a serious channel. Just delete those and just do it right here. Otherwise, it's very easy to create just a sub channel um, I'm going to let you just Google it because, frankly, it's really easy to create the actual YouTube channel. So we're just going to use this one. I'm going to customize this channel and I could change the name to a family that plays and change the profile picture, upload my banner image and stuff. Now, for this banner image and things, when we're just getting started here, I, so here is where I can change the name. Um, or my name, and then I can change the custom URL and things like that. Um, this part's pretty simple. Now for the banner image people, this like stops some people are like, ah, oh, my channel doesn't look ready. I, for this, really when I start a channel, I'm just gonna go to a stock photo agency, whichever one you use, um, whether it's Canva or stockphotos.com or Adobe Stock or whoever else. And I'm just gonna search like family and I'm just gonna chuck a stock photo up there. It doesn't even matter. Maybe one that you can't see the faces because that'd be weird if it's not us, right? Um, so, you know, a photo like this, great. Just chuck it up there. We just need something as a placeholder. Let's just start pumping out some videos. We don't have to worry so much about the design, right? All right, so now we're gonna actually create uh, the content. Now, as we're getting ready for this very first video, and I'm gonna take you through the full process showing you how I'm actually making the video, I want you to really think about what the channel stands for. Who are the enemies of this channel? And um, why someone would want to subscribe and who that kind of subscriber is. So I'm not trying to get super philosophical, but you'll see that this is gonna make a big difference in the actual video that we record, right? So we've got to think about enemies. For this channel, I'm thinking just by the name Families That Play, and we're going to do some content on uh, moving homes, at least to start the channel, you know, five or six videos on that maybe. Um, I want the enemy of this channel to be boredom, the status quo, um, unwillingness to change, um, not taking full advantage of what you can do with your kids and the time you have with them. Um, it's families that just kind of send their kids to school, don't really do anything on weekends, just let the kids play with the neighbors, go to, on vacation once a year, and we're gonna call it parenting. Um, that's gonna be the enemy of this channel. And so in this video that I make, I really wanna focus a lot on that and make sure I get that message out because then somebody who came for moving content may see it and say, boy, I really identify with what this is. I think I would like uh, the other content that they have on um, on this channel. 
So I'm gonna make sure to get that across. Now it's time to actually outline the video. Back to the whiteboard, I've gotta to put together an outline. It's very, very important when you make your videos that you do not script them. You are a smart person. If you would be capable of, you know, in a business meeting, your boss says, hey, Angela, tell us how this project is going. Well, you don't have to have notes. You just explain it, right? Maybe you have a couple bullet points of things you want to tell your team at work, but you're pretty capable of stringing sentences together, right? Um, you know, at, say you were asked to teach a lesson. Uh, you know, at, at my church at least, everybody, we just like take turns teaching lessons and stuff. It's like, it's not that hard. Like you, you know, kind of prepare, get what you want to say. And then most adults are capable of teaching a lesson, right? That's what we want on YouTube. It doesn't have to be like this super slick word for word polished presentation. Just pretend the camera is a human being and talk to him, right? And so we're just going to get a few bullet points. We're going to do this smart. So um, we're making a video on moving. Uh, let's say it's... Uh, ah, okay. It, okay. Oh, yeah. This is going to be good. Okay. So realtors cost too much money. And so I'm going to make the hook of this video, the very beginning, like the first 45 seconds, about how I saved a ton of money on a real estate agent. Uh, ah, yeah, this is going to be good. Okay, so um, I'm going to make the video called, I'm going to call it, let's see. Oh, dear, there's math involved. Okay, cool. I like this title. So I'm going to call the video, I saved $32,500 on, oh, it says realtors, realtors, not for sale by owner. So I like that. And this is really what I did. Um, I like this title because I was the, I wanted to target somebody who might be Googling or just looking for ways to save on realtors. You know, they may be just searching like how to pick a realtor. Uh, do you need a realtor to sell a home? Realtor versus for sale by owner, any of those kind of things. And then YouTube could show this video uh, as somebody that fits under that umbrella, that pocket of people looking for that kind of content. It's not essential that we think of this like blogging, that I, I don't have to title it something like how to save money on realtors. You just don't have to do that on, on YouTube. YouTube will find people that have searched many things similar to it and insert this content for them if it's applicable. So I love this. It's I saved 32,500 on realtors. So if that's just the title, somebody's going to see this and say, oh yeah, he went for sale by owner. Not very interesting. And so in parentheses, I put not for sale by owner or FSBO. And so I love a title that leaves some kind of mystery that you read it and it's like, wait, so how did you save on realtors? Um, I love a little mystery that hooks you, but doesn't tell enough of the story that you know everything. So oh, I, I kind of love that title actually. So great, we got that. Now the hook of the video, we're gonna, ooh, can I draw a hook or is this just gonna look like a J? Oh yeah, we got a little bar hook, baby. Um, so we're gonna have the hook at the very beginning. And I want to at least acknowledge this title, but I don't want to just repeat that title for the hook. I, because they already saw that. They've already were interested in that. I wanna make sure that I say something about it so they don't feel like I clickbaited them in the title. But I also want to use something new now to really intrigue them more. And so maybe what I'm going to say is, oh, OK, what if I stand out in front of my house? Uh, I think their sign is still up from the real estate agent. And I start right there and I say, like, um, I really did save thirty two thousand five hundred dollars on a realtor. What's even cooler, though, is I sold my house in twelve hours and I got three full price offers. Let me show you how I did it. So I like that for a hook. Three offers. And this is true. This happened last week. Uh, full price. 
Now think of a viewer. They came to this, they say, uh, yeah, I'm interested in, in saving money on a realtor. Now they're not sure how I did it because I didn't for sale by owner. They want to know how I got three offers on the first day. Um, and I, and so now they are just her, her brain is super, not a double hooker, not a hooker at all. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> I think I had a little bit too much caffeine today. All right. So, so now we got to start delivering the goods. If you think about every infomercial, every movie, every everything you've ever watched, first they capture you with something interesting. Then they start talking about the alternatives, the problems, and then they develop to the solution, right? You meet this character. <laughs> I hope my wife never sees this. It's like every Hallmark video you've ever seen, right? Beautiful, successful young lady from this tiny little town goes out to New York and becomes super successful at a marketing firm. And we see her life and it's so wonderful. You're hooked into her. We just like this lady. And then her sick parents need help and she has to go back home to the small town. Now we have the problem, right? She's left the big city. She loses her cell phone. <gasps> um, she walks through the city and bumps into someone, to a guy who's rough and tough and uh, doesn't seem to give her the time of, of day. And they physically bump into each other and she doesn't like him at first, but then they start to fall in love, right? It's, it's the hook, it's understanding and liking the person, the problem that they're experiencing, and then you see the hero reach that, uh, the end of the video, the climax, the resolution, right? That's just how every story works. Same thing with an infomercial. It's, um, you know, check out the scrub daddy. You know, you no longer need to use messy, tinfoil and blah, 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 and ouch, that hurts, you know? And then, look at the scrub daddy. And then at the end, it's like, but wait, there's more, right? It's always that same thing. It's the form, storm, norm, perform. It's that arc that we have to have. Okay, well, you get it. So now we're gonna talk about problems. We're gonna describe how much it costs for a real estate agent. I'm gonna do the math for them. Um, and talk about the problems. Uh, and then we need to start giving some tips, right? So I'm gonna start coming back to the hook because I don't want them to get bored and leave on me, right? So now I'm gonna start giving them the answer. Uh, let's let's uh, explain how I save. I can think of a few ways. One is flat fee, which is what I did. Flat fee real estate. Um, you could do a, uh, a reduced rate or a reduced cost. Or you could do FISBO for sale by owner, right? We're going to talk about it, um, even though I went with the other. So these are the three things that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to explain why I went with uh, each one of these. I've actually done each one of these as I've sold different homes. And so we'll talk about all of them. And then um, during this, after I mention the flat fee, one of the hooks has been removed from their mouth, right? Maybe two, because I, I've kind of explained it. And so it's going to be very easy for people to leave. And so it might be nice to drop another little hook, just a little mini one here, um, of where I say something like, now that's how I saved so much money but it's not how I got three offers on the first day. And so I'm just letting them know that there is more. And so then we're gonna start talking about house prep. Um, so to be a good YouTuber, and it's all about presenting the information in a way that people find helpful. Now that sounds obvious, but it's not at all. Every single time I work with a, a new YouTuber, 
Um, the video is how to save money on, on realtors, and their tips are like these. Their tips are um, for sale by owner. Um, how else could we save money? Um, well, it's not necessarily on the realtor, but you could do the moving yourself. Um, take the photos yourself instead of hiring a professional photographer. Who is happy that they saw that video? I mean, that's just, it's kind of obvious information. It's not that good. They want the ninja stuff, right? That's what they want. They want cool, cool little stuff. They want you to get specific with them. Exactly how much money I saved. How did I find a flat fee real estate agent? How do you negotiate a reduced cost with a real estate agent? Um, they want to know if you're doing for sale by owner, like problem is how are you going to get people to actually see your house? You got to get into specifics and the non obvious information. Sometimes I watch YouTube videos and I'm like, yeah, I knew that before I watched the video. Like tell me the cool stuff, right? So we're trying to cut out everything that's non-obvious in here. I like this. Now, most of you, as you're making your first videos, it's going to be better to just get a piece of paper, just a regular printer piece of paper, and just write in marker so it's big enough so you can see. Just write these things, right? Just write them so you can keep your train of thought and just tape it right under the camera. Dead simple, you do not need to complicate this. I did that process for years. Now I make multiple videos every single day and have for years. And so I, I can just remember this. I can, I can remember this and we can do this all in one take. So um, that's okay. But what I always do before I actually press record is I'm gonna sit down on the couch and I'm gonna actually just say the entire video, the whole thing, I'm gonna just say it without a camera on. And in my experience, that just works so much better. Once you've actually said it, it one, having a camera on just makes you feel a little bit nervous or afraid or distracted, trying to look nice, and so your brain isn't as clear. And so if you just said all the content, it becomes easier. So I'm gonna literally grab a chair and I'm gonna say this whole video uh, right here while you guys are watching. Again, this is the long version. This is just, I wanna show you every single step of how I make a YouTube video. All right, this is just the dry run here. Hey guys, welcome to my home. In this video, I wanna share with you how I did save $32,500. Oh, and then it'd be cool if I said something like what I could buy with that. Um, $32,500, that's like going to the dollar store and going and buying one item every single day for the next 89 and a half years of your life. $32,500 $500 is a lot of money. And I didn't need to put it up for sale by, by owner. Better yet, I got three offers on the very first day. Now the way I did this is totally not obvious and probably most people don't know how to, how to do this. So I'm going to show you how it's done. But first we need to understand how the real estate cartel actually works. Okay, I did my dry run. It's such a helpful process. By doing it, it gives you the time to just think a little fun things you can add in. Like at the hook, I say $32,500. That's like if you go to the dollar store and buy something today, and then you do the same thing every day for the next 89 and a half years. That's $32,500, right? Just something fun. It just adds a little zip, the tiny zip of Miracle Whip, if you're an Office fan. Um, it just adds those little things, and this is where I do it. It's right before I record, sitting in a chair, just thinking of fun things to say, uh, looking up some specifics, getting any numbers I need to have uh, so that I'm ready to go. So now, we're gonna actually record this. Now, I could very well record this right here. I could do this in front of a whiteboard. I think that'd be just great. But remember, there's a real danger of this video becoming a commodity. Somebody just Googling this, seeing my video, even liking it. 
and just leaving and never coming back to the brand. So it's super important that I bring my family into this and I tell them what my channel's actually about. So I feel like a better setting for this is just gonna be actually at my home. Show the for sale, the for sale sign in the front, show that my home's empty, that we're moving out, all that kind of stuff. I think it'd be really helpful. I'm not yeah. sure what you mean. Could you rephrase that? Okay. I think it'd be better to go to my house because it kind of helps us make more authentic content. <laughs> Let's go. All right, you guys, we're here. Welcome to my house. Well, for the next two weeks, I guess it's my house. <laughs> then I'll be moving. Sorry for the wind here. I'm going to make this part really short and then we're going to go inside so that the wind doesn't mess up the audio. I just have a little lapel mic on here that helps, uh, but it's still not great. All right, so here it is. Here's the hook. Ready? You guys, welcome to the house of Harmer. Our home was for sale for less than 24 hours and it sold. Not only that, I saved $32,500 on a real estate agent and I got three full price offers in 12 hours. Let's go inside and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it and how you can save on the cost of realtors. When my wife and I first started looking at selling our house, we were looking at how much it was gonna to cost to pay for real estate agents. You're paying 6% of the total price of the house to real estate agents. You're paying 3% to the seller's agent, 3% to the buyer's agent. This house um, just sold now for $1.2 million. So that's 36 grand to each agent. That's just way, way, way too much money. And I just thought there's no way I was gonna do this, so I thought maybe I'll just do a for sale by owner, but uh, it's just so hard if you're not on the MLS to really get the message out there. And Zillow, ah, Zillow has sold out to the real estate cartel because they used to show for sale by owner listings right along with the agent listings. Now they're like in the other if you're for sale by owner. So it's hard to get the message out there. So I wasn't sure what to do. And then I found something really cool. Let me go show it to you at the computer. So when I started thinking about the prospect of spending over $70,000 on a real estate agent, I just thought about all the things we could do with our family for $70,000. I mean, you guys know that's what this whole channel is all about, is just being active with your family. And we have some content on moving and things like that, but if you're just interested in having a better family, this is the channel for you. Um, you know, I thought about our trip to Egypt and to Brazil and to uh, South Africa and all the awesome things we've done together. And all those trips combined are like $70,000. There's no way I can just fork this over to a real estate agent. So the first thing I want you to do to save money is just go on Google, search the name of your city, and then search flat fee listing. Now, when I did this in Boise, first you're gonna see a bunch of ads. You gotta be cautious with those ads because a lot of them are scams. They're saying they can get you on the MLS for $99 and stuff. Some of them may be perfectly legit, but many of them aren't actually gonna get you on the real MLS uh, for that price. So really be careful um, about what you're getting but look for an actual real estate agent. Look at their about page, somebody that has a, a phone number with your area code so you know they're actually local and see what it would cost. So what I did is I found one that only charged $3,500, would get me on the MLS, essentially has done everything that a normal real estate agent would do, but I only had to pay $3,500 instead of 32 grand. Uh, to the real estate agent. So I saved a huge amount. Uh, it would have been 36 and I got it down to 32 just by saving that. So that was awesome. So that's hands down my best recommendation is find a flat fee listing company. Now, if you can't find one on Google, the next step is everybody knows a real estate agent. Everybody knows somebody in town. Everybody's got a friend. Now, they may not all be able to, depending on their brokerage rules. They may not want to, which is fine. It's their business. Um, but reach out to those friends and just say, look, 
I just can't give away that much to do it, but I'm happy to do the work myself. You know, I've already looked at the comparables on Zillow, um, and I think I have an idea what the home should sell for. I um, and will do the photos myself. I'll go call the call a real estate photography company. I cost mine cost about three hundred fifty dollars to get those photos done, and they were excellent. Um, you know, tell them that you're going to do the things. You're going to stage the home, everything. On some MLSs, they can even put just your phone number as the contact phone number, and P and the agents will just contact you directly to schedule a showing. But a lot of them are doing more apps and stuff like showing time and stuff. Um, so tell your friend, like, say, hey, I'm going to do everything. I just want you to put. The, I'm going to send you the photos, the description, the everything. Will you put it on MLS? And then I'll pay you several thousand dollars to do a flat fee listing. You know, if you've got a friend uh, who can work with you, um, that can be great. I've done that before. Um, when I've sold a different house, I reached out to a few friends and some said, ah, I'm not comfortable with that, don't wanna do that. And others said, oh, sure, no problem, no big deal. I understand, it's a lot of money you don't wanna spend if you're willing to do some of the work, that's great. And it worked out awesome. So flat fee listing, fantastic. Now there are other services like Assist to Sell, uh, Homey, etc. Others um, that are really popping up that can still get you on the MLS, um, but charge a little bit more than that and are kind of the halfway between a real estate agent and doing it yourself. And so you may consider some of those as well, but save as much as you can on the listing side because on the seller, on the buyer side, there is virtually no way around the real estate cartel. I call it a cartel because they're stealing those family vacations. They're taking a lot of money and I know they do valuable work, but um, ha, they do a lot of anti-competitive things that I don't love either. Now, the reason you can't get around the buyer side is the buyer doesn't pay anything to the real estate agent. So as soon as somebody wants to start looking at homes, they want to get on the MLS, they call a real estate agent, and it's going to be you, the seller, who pays that, that commission. And so every buyer gets an agent. And so that's the problem with for sale by owner. It's not so much that you can't get around on the listing side, it's the problem that you will end up paying the buyer's agent anyway. When I've done for sale by owner, even when I get the word out, I do an open house, I put signs around town, um, I put it on Zillow, everything. The real estate agents contact you and say, I'll bring a buyer by if you'll pay me the 3%. Um, and so I just could not find a way around that side. You're going to give that up almost for sure. Now, after the flat fee listing service, another option that you can look at is to simply limit the rate that a real estate agent is going to charge. Now in Idaho, the standard is 3% buyer seller side. In other markets, it's different. And I've found that if you interview enough real estate agents, you're gonna find one that's willing to negotiate with you. Will they do it for one and a half percent? Will they do it for 2%? The other thing that you can do is on the MLS, when you have your agent list it, you can say, I only wanna offer 2% to the buyer's agent. At least in Idaho, you can, you can set that at whatever you want. Um, and I've had a couple real estate agents mad at me that showed the house and say, I didn't check the listing. I didn't know it was a reduced fee. And I said, I'm, I'm sorry, that's what I am willing to pay. I was totally upfront with it. It was right in the listing. Um, you know, that's what I think it's worth. Um, and so that is an option of something you can do is try to negotiate, especially if your home is more expensive the real estate agents want you to think that a million dollar home takes way more work to sell than a $400,000 home, but it's pretty much the same process. And so you may be able to negotiate a cut rate if your home is a little bit more expensive as well. Okay, now for sale by owner. We already said you're probably gonna pay to the buyer's agent, but what can you do to get the word out there? One thing that I've done before uh, that actually worked great because I wasn't getting enough showings is I went for sale by owner. I got for sale by owner signs and I put the address real big. I made a website for 2064 East Mozart Street was a home I owned several years ago. Um, and I just put them at the entrance to like 
15 different neighborhoods around town that were kind of similar to the neighborhood uh, that my home was for sale in. And so people drive by and they think, oh, it's a home for sale in that neighborhood, but then they can go to the website or call my phone number, text me about it. And I say, oh yeah, it's over here in town. It was great. <laughs> uh, I was able to get the, like everybody in the city knew about this house for sale because I put up signs all over the place uh, in different neighborhoods, kind of in the little common areas. So, you know, check your local laws about signage and stuff, but it worked. So you're going to save a ton of money on, say, on selling the house. But again, this channel is about your family and being active. And so a couple important things that I think about when you're selling your house and how it's going to impact your family are one, go enjoy the new city. You know, right now our family is moving from Boise, Idaho down to St. George, Utah. And so I'm making trips down there with them and we're going mountain biking, we're going canyoneering and stuff. Let the kids be excited about the new place that you're going to. Don't just go there with your wife and leave the kids with grandma um, because then they won't get excited about it. It's hard, it can be a hard move for them as well. So do exciting things with them. The next tip I would give for having it have low impact on your family is to not spend all day talking about the house. When you're moving, it's all consuming. It's all you talk about, think about with your spouse, when you're in the car, everything. And so for the kids, this could be a time where they get a message that material things are what's most important. They can get the message that family time is less important than making this financial decision. And so it's something that my wife and I have decided to do as we're making this move is we just don't talk about it during the day. We talk about it after the kids go to sleep. You know, sometimes we'll have a family discussion. We'll say, well, let's go look at the homes and things like that. But we aren't talking about it all day. We want to make sure that for our kids, the message is clear. Family and God are important. Material things are material things. That's what this whole channel is about. It's about being active and being better parents and families. Whether you have a big adventure moving or something else, give us a subscribe and a like, and we'll see you in the next video. Whew, okay, so we did it. Now we have the recording um, of the video. We've watched the whole thing, and now we're gonna go chuck this thing on the computer, and I'm gonna show you how I edit it. Again, you're seeing the whole process here, and then I'll show you the upload settings for getting this thing on YouTube. All right, we got our video filmed. Now it's time to edit it. Now we have a whole course on how to edit, so this is not about um, the nuts and bolts of how to do this. It's more just showing you the process of how long it takes, how much I'm putting into these videos, etc. So first thing I did is I just created a folder and I put all my audio and my video files right in it. Now I'm gonna go over to Final Cut, which is where I do my editing. Now there are free programs you can use uh, for editing on the PC. A lot of people use Premiere Pro, which I've used for many years. If you're on the Mac though, Final Cut is awesome. Uh, iMovie does some pretty good stuff too and it's free, but Final Cut, oh, it's so worth it. Okay, so I'm gonna just go to File, New, whoops. I'm gonna make an event. So this is the whole library. Now I'm gonna make an event of uh, moving. And I'm gonna keep all my defaults, they're usually right. Okay, so this is an event. Now I need to project in it, and that's this, and I'm gonna just call it moving. Then I'm simply gonna take all these files here. Maybe. And I'm just gonna drag and drop them right there. Bam. Okay, I'm gonna hit Command minus to zoom out there so we can actually see these. Now, uh, this has everything, including me teaching you, not just this. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to go through and figure out where I'm actually starting the YouTube video. Okay, so there was nothing. This was just teaching you guys. Oh my gosh, did you guys see my vault spot there? Where was it? I just saw it. Ah, there. Whoa, go back. Dang, now I just see my tongue. You saw it though, you saw my bald spot. I love that thing. I can't wait for the day that I don't have to do my hair. This is great. Okay, so let's go here. 
Okay, it's pretty much right at the beginning. Okay, so I'm just going to drag this and drop it down. Now, listen to this. This is just with the onboard audio. All right, you guys, we're here. Welcome to my house. Well, for the next two weeks, I guess it's my house, then I'll be moving. Sorry for the wind here. I'm going to make this part really short, and then we're going to go inside so that the wind does Okay, so there's that one, uh, the onboard audio. Then we'll hear it in the house. And this house sold for $1.2 million. So it's very echoey in the house because everything's empty. So now let's get the lavalier microphone. And you know what, I'm gonna delete this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this audio and this clip, select them both, then I can right click and I can do synchronize clips and then it's automatically gonna sync the audio and the video together for me so I don't have to line them up. I'm just gonna drag that down here. So doesn't that sound so much better, that echo? So the lavalier microphone that I'm wearing just sounds so much better, especially if you're in a normal home environment. Um, I mean, mine's especially bad because it's empty, but home's just echo. Uh, and so having a lav really makes a big difference. Look at that, I'm kind of showing my gut here. Sheesh, guys, come on, keep it together, exercise a bit. Okay, so let's go to the start of this. All right, here's the hook. So I'm just gonna cut right before it. You guys, welcome to the house of Harmer. Our home was for sale. I did, I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it and how you can save on the cost of realtors. Okay, then I'm gonna hit B, blade tool to cut there. Go to where I'm talking next. All right, you guys. First of all. I now here's a tip. If you edit right after you record, you're able to save a ton of time because I remember I did two takes of this part. First one just was sounding weird. So I go in about 45 seconds. Uh, for a lot more than, than they were. I just started to kind of just blab. I wasn't doing a good job really delivering the goods. So I just went back and restarted that section. And here because of the waveform, see the audio down there? I can see nothing happened here and I start right back there. So I'll press B to blade, A to get back to the arrow, delete that section, and now it goes right from the hook. How I did it and how you can save on the cost of realtors. All right, you guys, this is it. I have been here for a couple weeks getting the house sold. Um, oh, it hurts me to even say that. That and what worked for us. Okay, I can cut there to right there. Get that out. It's going to cost to pay for real estate agents. You're paying 6% of the total price of the house to real estate. When we, my wife and I first started looking uh, at it looks like I did two takes of this, so I'm going to remove another one. Looking at how much it was going to cost to pay for. Okay, then I stop talking here. We'll blade there. Go over to the computer. I can see this is where I start talking. And then I found something really cool. Let me go show it to you at the computer. So when I started thinking about the prospect of spending over $70,000 on a real estate agent, I... Okay, now I'm talking, talking, talking. There's a little pause here. Let's see what that is. Oh, I was just kind of collecting myself, thinking between tips. Now, the reason you can't get around... A little pause here. Just collecting myself a little bit. So you're gonna I'm just kind of cut that out. It's nice if when you're collecting yourself, you don't say, um, uh, let me think. Just silent because then you can easily spot it on the timeline. Bam, there's the end. Done. And it's an 11 minute video. So the question then remains, how much should you be putting into the editing on your channel? 
I guess what I would say with a video like this, 90% of just is this video going to succeed or fail is already done. It's what I said, it's where I was, it's the content, it's the hook, it's all of that. Now, I can look a lot more professional if I maybe add a short little music drop that doesn't, not too much music. Music is, mm, you, you really can turn people off with music, but short little music drop, maybe show the logo. When I'm sharing some of the tips, I could put the, the title under there of, you know, the money and the cha-ching and the showing the math on the screen and text, all that kind of stuff. I think that is going to take me an extra half an hour and it's going to add 10% to the video. I think it's 90% there. That would add another 10% of just polish and interest to the video. And so how much should you do on your channel? In the beginning, I think you're probably better to spend that time focusing on the 90% and not the 10% really focus on you on camera and just getting videos out so that you can stick with a consistent publishing routine. Over time though, um, like for an income school video, if we can spend five hours and get 10 more percent from the video, well that may go out to an extra 5,000 people. And so yeah, that's definitely worth it for us um, to, to spend that little extra time on there. And so that's just up to you on a channel, but this video really is fine. Just basic chops. Yeah, I've got some interest doing some fun things in the content in the 90%, so I don't have to have that glitz. So now I'm gonna hit export here. I'm gonna do it in 4K now. I don't really care if you go down to 1080p. I probably wouldn't do 720. Um, you know, a lot of screens now, 720 starting to look old. And you know, these videos, we want them to be getting views on YouTube for years to come. And so I like to future proof myself, go to 4K. But again, if you're if you're 1080, who cares? It's perfectly fine. 720, let's see if we can start stepping it up. Okay, now I like to just export it on my machine. I did the Apple devices 4K and then just upload the file. You can connect it directly to YouTube it like works for a while and then it just stops working and so I find it's just better just to just do it. Now the other thing is this is 1.6 gigabytes this file and so that's definitely a consideration when your uh, is what your home internet speeds are. This home is in a pretty rural area. I don't have very good in, uh, internet at the office. It's blazing fast. At the office, 1.6 gigabytes is like, please, you know, give me 20 minutes and it's up. Um, but here, that could be hours. Um, and so you may want to step down your resolution, you know, go from 4K to 1080 just to make it reasonable to make your uploads. Then the other thing is make sure that your computer isn't going to power down. You know, go to your settings, energy saver, and just just go to never like this, um, so that you are um, so that you don't uh, so it doesn't turn off while it's trying to export or upload. Okay, so all I would just say is next, and it's going to export that file. Now that's going to take forever, um, and so I'm just going to um, I'm just going to put up a dummy file on YouTube just so I can show you what that upload process is going to look like. So here's my channel. And I'm gonna just hit the plus button, upload video, select a file. Um, oh, that's a really short one, we'll just do that, okay. Okay, now while this is, so I'm gonna set a title. Generally what I would say with the title is, um, give some fun, give a little bit of mystery, um, but also make it clear, give them enough that they know what you're talking about. So we decided we we're going to call this, I saved $32,500 on a realtor and I didn't sell by owner. Okay, now it is important that you just write a couple sentences describing this. This is gonna show in your meta description if this shows on 
um, Google search and it is just helping YouTube to just know what your channel's even about, especially in the early days. Don't try to keyword stuff, just say what your video is. So I'm just gonna say something like, um, uh, I saved Okay, simple. Just write a couple sentences basically describing it. Okay, now let's talk thumbnails. <sighs> if you're a talented graphic designer, boy, you can do some neat things. I think the best case scenario is where you just take a custom image um, and, uh, that just really illustrates your video, even if you don't have to put text on it. Text on a thumbnail can be great, no doubt, but boy, when you can take an image that doesn't even need text, it's just so compelling and it already tells the story, ah, that's just ideal. Um, I'm not opposed to using screenshots from the video as the thumbnail. A lot of times there's just a good one that works really well. And so, you know, if I go back to this video, I'm thinking me in the very beginning, um, let's see if we can just get a good, yeah, bingo, that's a thumbnail. I'm just going to take a screenshot of that, bam, that's going to work great. It shows this, it's an interesting, um, <laughs> very interesting expression I have. Um, I think it's somebody who's searching for this it's gonna look good. So I'm just gonna upload that screenshot. It may be too big. We'll see, sometimes they have issues. There we go. Okay, yeah, so it has to be smaller than two megabytes. And so I will have to open it in Photoshop file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to file, new, 3840 by 2160, that's essentially 4K. Uh, the other stuff doesn't really matter. Anybody who tells you resolution matters doesn't quite understand how that works. If we're talking about an image on the web, I'm gonna place embedded. Where'd you go? There we go. All right, now, so I'm obviously using Photoshop here, but Really, if you just take a screenshot, you could just upload it, go to like, just Google like image resizing tool. And there will be a bunch on the web that you can just upload it and it'll resize it to a smaller size for you. Um, so I just need to get the file size under two megabytes. It's real simple. So the title says I saved $32,500. So I don't wanna just repeat that in the, in the, text here, I want to do something else. So we can use different hooks on these people, right? We already have that one. Um, I'm going to say, maybe do what I did at the start of the video. We'll do, um, I'll grab, there's, maybe I'll grab a green, I don't know, something from the video or from the thumbnail. And we'll just go, I'm not trying to teach you Photoshop here. I'm just showing you exactly the process I do. Whatever, I'll say three offers in 24 hours, you know? Okay, you get it. Um, then I'm just going to export this. You can do JPEG or ping is fine. JPEG is gonna be smaller and for images like this, it's almost always gonna be better to be in a JPEG. 
Um, and I can see my file size, great, we're under two megabytes. I'm gonna export this. Apparently I can't spell thumb, it's just a thub. There's my thub image. Uh, I can add it to a playlist if I want. Now, is it made for kids? Unless it's like explicitly made for kids, say no. It's not saying like, is it okay for kids? Is it is it targeted to kids? Um, that's a very important setting. Uh, so read this, make sure you're doing it right, but I'm certainly not targeting kids here, so I don't need this. Now notice this, more options is where you can add tags and stuff. It's because it's not very important. Uh, they're really using it to correct misspellings and stuff in the uh, in the translation. It doesn't matter much, but whatever. We'll say moving realtor, real estate agent for sale by owner. Whatever. We don't even need to do that. Most of the time, I don't even enter tags. Um, and this stuff, again, this just doesn't really matter. Now I can say next. Now, video elements, this isn't gonna be available because the video is still uploading. And then visibility. So what I wouldn't do is just click publish public right away. Reason is YouTube gets the video and makes a very low quality version of it first. And so if you have a bunch of subscribers and you just click public, your first comment on everything is gonna be, why is this so grainy? And it's like, wait an hour, YouTube's still kind of rendering it to get the, the higher quality versions. So don't make it public. I always click schedule, even if, um, even if I want it to go out, you know, essentially now, I'll just schedule it for, you know, give the upload plus an hour and a half, just to make sure it can get those higher versions. And then we'll set it, it's not as a premiere, premiere's where we're getting on and watching it with them. And then I just click schedule and we're done. We just made a YouTube video together. High five. Oh, sorry, did that hurt? <laughs> All right, so this is a long video. Um, if you've watched it, hopefully it kind of showed you the full process. Um, you guys can do this. It's not that hard. I'm not a genius. I'm not um, like, none of these steps were particularly hard. You'll just have to figure out your way, your process. How are you gonna edit? How are you gonna make your thumbnail? Just simple things and then you'll be set.